Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Museum Madness. In this episode, we're going to be going out of history and into biology as we tackle our first couple of biological exhibits. The first one, the Hall of Dinosaurs. Basically, this exhibit is... I won't say pointless, but it's unnecessarily tricky. The whole idea of this exhibit is that we have to reassemble dinosaur skeletons because the computer reconstruction program has been wrecked by the virus and we have to reset it all. Sorry about that, I had to bump my mic anyway. Uh, we have to... Well, let's take a look. See what damage has been done. Yeah, that doesn't look right. That looks like, uh... Yeah, I don't even know what that looks like. That just looks really bad. Anyway, you can kind of tell... Not a single one of these dinosaurs... Whoop, not a single one of these dinosaurs is assembled correctly anymore. We have to go into the computer and reset them all. Now, it's not quite a puzzle because you're not moving pieces around. You're just swapping components, as you'll see in a minute. So, there are... I want to say six, five or six uh, dinosaurs that we have to... And we have to reassemble, and uh, we have to do that on this computer terminal. It's pretty simple. There are six buttons at the bottom and six different components that we have to swap around to be able to get to match. Now, as simple as this is, it's actually a lot trickier than it looks because there's no indication as to what bones go with what dinosaurs, aside from just guessing at to as what makes what. So we're gonna keep swapping out components here until we get something that seems close. So the Stegosaurus is actually fairly simple because you're swapping out components. Most of its spine has uh, plates on it. But the thing that's gonna be tricky to get are its head and its arms because, arms and legs, because there's no real way to tell which ones are the one, are it because there are four uh, yeah, four quadruped dinosaurs that we have to put back together, and the, even if the feet match, they could still belong to a completely different dinosaur. Once we have something assembled that we think looks right, we hit OK to test it, and the computer rejects us. So, hmm. The neck? No, the neck was right because it had plates on it, so we know that that's the stegosaurus neck. No, it can't be the body because, again, it had plates on it, so we know that that's correct. The feet, maybe? Those feet? No, they're too long. Those two those two pairs match, but I don't know. Those don't look right, but they could be right. I'm just not sure at all. Nope, that's not it. Hmm. Well, if your data records exist, why can't you just reassemble this thing the way you want to? Oh, the head was wrong. Okay. See, this is one of the only puzzles in the game where put it, using the help function actually works. There we go. All you have to do to solve any of these puzzles is to click the help function and the puzzle will automatically reset one of the pieces to what it's supposed to be. So the easiest thing to do in this exhibit is to put together the three most, uh, well, to put together the most uh, obvious dinosaurs first. Like, the Stegosaurus is pretty, I won't say obvious, but it's fairly uh, easy to recognize because, again, it has mostly plate parts. The T-Rex, being a theropod, has fairly simple body structure, even if the portrait does look hideous. So yeah, that's that. The Diplodocus and the Brachiosaurus you want to leave until last because those are the two most confusing to put together. The Triceratops, being a quadruped, is a little bit harder to put together. But, uh, yeah. So I, I don't even have the right body at this point. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. No, that's not the right uh, hindquarters. Maybe? Maybe not? No, that's that can't be right. It's too short. Oh. Wait. Huh? Oh, yeah. See, it depends. It... it changes the what you're building based on what the body is. 
So as long as you have the correct body and you hit the help button, something will change to the correct body. Uh, the four legs? Okay, so the Triceratops has the longer, more splayed out limbs. And I don't, is that the right tail? Yep, it is. I thought that tail was too short. I guess I was wrong. Again, the portraits of them look pretty hideous because they're considering that they're all the same color. But once you've got them assembled, you can actually go and look at them in the exhibits. Not that they actually do anything. They don't move. They don't even roar. But yeah. And anytime you want to go back to the, to the computer area, just click on the terminal in the upper right. And that'll take you right back here to the main assembly area. And you can just go back to the computer and get started on the next one. see. We have another theropod here that we can put together, an Iguanodon. Iguanodon, we want to find... Yep, there we go. Okay, the duck-billed skull. It's got thumb spikes, so we know that that's right. None of the hind legs look correct, and that's the only pair of theropod legs that I think we've got left. I'm guessing it's the shorter tail. Let's check. Nope. It's probably the longer one, then. Yep, there it is. So there's the Iguanodon. I always liked Iguanodons as a kid. It's because they got spikes for thumbs. It's pretty hardcore. This Stegosaurus. Okay, so now we can try to put together the uh, quadrupeds. The Brachiosaurus. It's actually kind of tricky assembling the two quadrupeds because they're both very similar. Oh. Never mind then. So yeah, that's all we had to do with that, even though that's not technically a scientifically correct assemblage of Brachiosaurus, but, or Diplodocus. Well, no, the Diplodocus looks pretty close to what scientists think that they look like now, but whatever. This is the 90s. I'll give them a pass. And all you have to do is hit exit, and uh, we can go and take a look at all the exhibits, just to check up on them, making sure they're doing all right, and once we've done that, we can leave. Go on. Go on. That's right. There you go. So we've already seen the T-Rex exhibit, so we can just pass right on through. Take a look at the Iguanodon. Huh. <laughs> Looks like your math teacher. Shut up, kid. Nobody likes you. Hmm. Well, people think that the Brachiosaurus used that bump on its head as a uh, resonating chamber for sound, but... Uh, you know, whatever. And how do you know this one's a she? I don't think you can tell that from just bones. Play fullback on any team you want to. Try defensive end or linebacker. No, I wouldn't either. So, yeah. Dinosaurs are awesome, but we do have more work to do in the rest of the museum. So we need to go back and uh, get started on that. Now that we've started on this biology, Bence, uh, let's get... Uh, back at it and start the next exhibit. This one is actually pretty fun. It's not hard, not like that last one was, but uh, it is cool. Ocean Life. The music here reminds me a lot of Treasure Cove. I don't know if anybody out there remembers that game. It's an old uh, educational game like this one that was all underwater that had this kind of music playing the whole time. It was really nice. Very calming and peaceful. So... You can talk to Mick here. Basically, the water here is polluted. Worst pollution imaginable, apparently. And what we have to do is we have to unpollute the water. How we do that, you'll see. So yeah, the sea life here isn't doing well. What we need to do is we need to try to get that chest open to, to get some equipment out of it. But we can't use anything that's in our backpack because we don't want to ruin it with the uh, salt water and sand and everything. So we're going to need some, some way to breathe underwater to be able to explore the rest of the exhibit. And there's a diving suit look, locked away in that chest. And we have to go and get it. So yeah, this is the coral reef, but it looks kind of sick. And the only thing floating around in there is that weird shrimp. Let's keep going. Let's keep moving. Hmm. Out in the deeper water, the only thing out here is a shark. And there's kind of a wrench thing on the bottom there. 
probably gonna need that for later. And here in the really deep water, there's a pipe leaking something and a glowfish way back there, but... Hmm, I don't know. We can't really get a good look at it. It's so dark. Let's try to use our flashlight, maybe, and see if we can get a better look. Nope. Don't want to ruin it. So let's head back to the first area. Well, we're gonna have to find some way to open that chest so we can get some equipment that won't be completely ruined by the salt water. We're gonna need that wrench, though. So we have to dive down. We have to get past that shark somehow, too. Hmm. Got a tall order. There's nothing we can use in our backpack. So we have to get that chest open, but there's nothing around here that we can really use to get it open. What are we gonna do? Can't use our pocket knife, as useful as it may be. Mick, what do we do? Sea star. Oh yeah, that thing over by the treasure chest on the on the sand. So basically what we have to do to start the solution to this exhibit is pick up the sea star and put her in the pool. Even though the water is technically too dirty for her, it... I don't know why they keep... He keeps assuming things are girls. Basically, the water's too dirty for it, but as hungry as it is, it goes right down, opens up a clam for us, and then hops right back up onto that rock. And the clam had a key. It's reminding me more and more of Treasure Cove. Or at least of, uh, you know, Donkey Kong. Whatever. So we can grab the key out of there and use that to open the chest and get our equipment out. Well, not our equipment, but some equipment. Equipment that we need, rather. Let's take a look inside. So there's some diving equipment and a net. We're gonna need to take both of those things. We can't just take one. So we can put the diving suit on. Controls are easy to op- You're walking. You're not- You know, it's not a power suit. Or, you know, whatever. It's not Iron Man suit, kid. So yeah, now we can actually dive into the water, and what we have- What we want to do is we want to use the net to capture the shrimp. And that gunshot wasn't a mistake. This shrimp is a pistol shrimp. A pistol shrimp fires a really loud noise underwater to, to catch its prey. But what we can do is use it to scare off the shark. Yeah, pistol shrimp are actually pretty awesome because the sound waves that they fire are strong enough to be able to... Sh I believe... I think they can shatter glass with it. So, yeah, it's hard to keep them in aquariums. So yeah, we have to use the pistol shrimp to scare away the shark, and that'll let us through so we can get to the, get the wrench and advance onto the last area of the exhibit. So you're the one who fixed the pipes in the kitchen kit, huh? Yeah, like I believe that. Unfortunately, while you're in the diving suit, you can't quick travel from to uh, different areas of the exhibit, and it you always walk very slowly. It's kind of like using the uh, breathing suit in Knights of the Old Republic. But yeah, we can't really see anything to be able to fix the pipes here, so we're going to have to use the net again to capture that glowfish back there. There we go. Alright, now just play nice and illuminate those pipes for us so we can get them fixed, alright? Go ahead and use our wrench here on the pipes. get it all nice and patched up. And it's kind of hard to tell what's going on, but uh, basically what's happening is it's the cleanness of the water is spreading pixel by pixel instead of lightning gradients and everything, and now all of a sudden the water's clean. But uh, unfortunately we can't enjoy the really clean water for long because we're almost out of air. So we're going to have to head back to the surface. On our way, though, we get to see some pretty cool marine life, so that's a nice bonus. Oh, there's sea turtles. And a... 
Hmm. Well, there's no sign of the shark, but there is a pretty awesome manta ray over there. Let's go ahead and move on. I don't know why we still make the sneakers noise while we're underwater, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, the reef's coming back to life. There's plenty of fish out here now. All darting around and being all colorful and stuff. It's like finding Nemo in here. Not really, but, you know, whatever. I don't know exactly how we're swimming in that big heavy suit, but, you know, even the tidal pool is coming back to life. Our friend the starfish is all nice and happy out on that, those rocks. There's fish swimming around and we're done. So next time on Museum Madness, we're going to be going deeper into the biology exhibits. I'll see you guys all then. Later.